Hi guys, so we are going to continue on with our reading of The Witches. Um, we're going to be reading today uh, the chapter called Summer Holidays. And before we get started, um, I'm going to um, offer you up that connections question. Um, again, each week you can get up to four bonus points. So um, if you do the questions uh, for... The, if you do two sets of questions, then you'll get the total um, bonus points for that. So today's um, connection question is, do you have any pets? Um, if you do, I want you to tell me about them. If you don't, um, I want you to tell me what you wish you could have a pet as a pet and, and why. So make sure this is good third grade work because I know this would be an easy one for you to just say, yes, it's a dog or no, I don't have any pets. I wish I had a dog. Um, but give some good details um, to, to earn those bonus points. I want to see good third grade work. Um, so that's that's the beginning there. Uh, the three question or the three um, words that I want to make sure that you listen for this time are the words consolation. So um, think about what it means to console somebody. Um, consolation is kind of making somebody feel better. When you console them, you make them feel better. Um, the word relentlessly. So um, that's in the case that if you're very um, determined. So one of the examples would be like a dog that's digging for a bone that's really deep down. We would say that they were um, relentlessly digging in the dirt. And then the other word is compromise, which we've talked a lot about in our class because we talked about what a win-win is. Um, and in that case, you are kind of figuring out something that um, gets both people or both parties um, something that they want. So we talked before about um, me saying to one of our students or one of our students asking me, I think that we should have recess all day, Miss Showman. Um, and our compromise would be, okay, here's the work that I need you to get done. And if you get this done, then we can go outside and have some extra recess. So a compromise is kind of working to um, make both groups happy. Um, here we go. The Easter holidays came and went, and the summer term began at school. My grandmother and I had already planned to take our summer holiday in Norway, and we talked about almost nothing else every evening. She had booked a cabin for each of us on the boat from Newcastle to Oslo at the earliest possible moment after my school broke up. And from Oslo, she was going to take me to a place she knew down in the south coast near Ardenal, where she had spent her own summer holidays as a child nearly 80 years ago. All day long, she said. My brother and I were out in the rowing boat. The whole coast is dotted with tiny islands and there's nobody on them. We used to explore them and dive into the sea off the lovely smooth granite rocks. And sometimes on the way out, we would drop the anchor and fish for cod and whitting. And if we caught anything, we would build a fire on the island and fry the fish in, in the world. Whoops. Fry the fish in a pan for our lunch. There is no finer fish in the world than absolutely fresh cod. What did you use for bait, Grandmama, when you went fishing? Mussels, she said. Everyone uses mussels for bait in Norway. And if we didn't catch any fish, we would boil the mussels in a saucepan and eat those. Now, she's not talking about the mussels on your arm. She's talking about an animal that's called a mussel. So if you need to look that up, you can pause and you can look that up um, and just Google mussel animal and it'll show you that. That way you can have a good idea of what they were using for bait. Were they good? Delicious, she said. Cooked them in seawater and they were tender and salty. What else did you do, Grandmama? We used to row out and wave to the shrimp boats on their way home and they would stop and give us a handful of shrimps each. The shrimps were still warm from having been just cooked and we would sit in the rowing boat peeling them and gobbling them up. The head was the best part. The head, I said. You squeeze the head between your teeth and suck out the inside. It's marvelous. You and I will do all those things this summer, my darling, she said. Grandmama, I said, I can't wait. I simply can't wait to go. Nor can I, she said. When there were only three weeks of the summer term left, an awful thing happened. My grandmother got pneumonia. 
She became very ill, and a trained nurse moved into the house and to look after her. The doctor explained to me that pneumonia is not normally a dangerous illness nowadays because of penicillin, but when a person is more than 80 years old, as my grandmother was, then it is very dangerous indeed. He said he didn't even dare to move her to the hospital in her condition, so she stayed in her bedroom and I hung about outside the door while oxygen cylinders and all sorts of other frightening things were taken into her. Can I go in and see her, I asked. No, dear, the nurse said, not at the moment. A fat and jolly lady called Mrs. Spring, who used to come and clean our house every day, also moved in and slept in the house. Mrs. Spring looked after me and cooked my meals. I liked her very much, but she wasn't a patch on my grandmother for telling stories. One evening, about ten days later, the doc- doctor came in downstairs and said to me, You can go in and see her now, but only for a short time. She's been asking for you. I flew up the stairs and burst into my grandmother's room and threw myself into her arms. Hey there, the nurse said. Be careful with her. Will you be all right now, Grandmama? I asked. The worst is over, she said. I'll be up soon again. Will she? I said to the nurse. Oh, yes, the nurse answered, smiling. She told us she simply had to get better because she had to look after you. I gave her another hug. They won't let me have a cigar, she said, but you wait till they're gone. She's a tough old bird, the nurse said. We'll have her up in another week. The nurse was right. Within a week, my grandmother was thumping around the house with her gold-topped cane and interfering with Mrs. Spring's cooking. I thank you for all your help, Mrs. Spring, she said, but you can go home now. Oh, no, I can't, Mrs. Spring said. Doctor told me to see that you take it easy for the next few days. The doctor said more than that. He dropped a bombshell on my grandma and me, telling us that n- on no account were, there to, were we to risk the journey to Norway this summer. Rubbish, my grandmother cried. I've promised him we'll go. It's too far, the doctor said. It would be very dangerous, but I'll tell you what you can do. You can take your grandson to a nice hotel on the south coast of England instead. The sea air is just what you need. Oh, no, I said. Do you want your grandmother to die? The doctor asked me. Never, I said. Then don't let her go on a long journey this summer. She's not yet strong enough. And stop her smoking those vile cigars. In the end, the doctor had his way about the holiday, but not about the cigars. Rooms were booked for us in a place called the Hotel Magnificent in the famous seaside town of Bournemouth. Bournemouth, my grandmother told me, was full of old people like herself. They retired there by the thousand because the air was so bracing and healthy it kept them, so they believed, alive for a few extra years. Does it? I asked. Of course not, she said. It's Tommy Rot, but just for once I think I've got to obey the doctor. Soon after that, my grandmother and I took the train from Bournemouth and settled into the Hotel Magnificent. It was an enormous white building on the seafront, and it looked to me like a pretty boring place to spend the summer holiday in. I had my own separate bedroom, but there was a door connecting my room with my grandmother's room so that we could visit each other without going into the corridor. A corridor is like a hallway. Just before we left Bournemouth, my grandmother had given me, as consolation, a present of two white mice in a little cage, and of course I took them with me. They were terrific fun, those mice. I called them William and Mary. And in the hotel, I set out right away teaching them to do tricks. The first trick I taught them was to creep up the sleeve of my jacket and come out my neck. Then I taught them to climb up the back of my neck onto the top of my head. I did this by putting cake crumbs in my hair. On the very first morning after our arrival, the chambermaid was making my bed when one of my mice poked its head out from under the sheet. The maid let out a shriek and brought a dozen people running to see who was being murdered. I was reported to the manager. 
There followed an unpleasant scene in the manager's office with the manager, my grandmother, and me. The manager, whose name was Mr. Stringer, was a bristly man in a black tail suit. I cannot permit my, permit mice in my hotel, madam, he said to my grandmother. How dare you say that when your rotten hotel is full of rats anyways, my grandmother cried. Rats, cried Mr. Stringer, going mauve in his face. That's kind of like a pinkish red color. There are no rats in this hotel. I saw one this very morning, my grandmother said. It was running down the corridor into the kitchen. That is not true, cried Mr. Stringer. You had better get that rat catcher in at once, my grandmother said. And before I report you to the public health authorities, I expect there's rats scuttling all over the kitchen floor and stealing food off the shelves and jumping in and out of the soup. Never, cried Mr. Stringer. No wonder my breakfast toast was all nibbled around the edges this morning, my grandmother went on relentlessly. No wonder it had nasty, ratty taste. If you're not careful, the health people will be ordering the entire hotel to be closed before everyone gets typhoid fever. You are not being serious, madame, Mr. Stringer said. I was never more serious in my life, my grandmother said. Are you or are you not going to allow my grandson to keep his mice in his room? The manager knew that he was beaten. May I suggest a compromise, madame, he said. I will permit him to keep them in his room as long as they are never allowed out of the cage. How's that? That will suit us very well, my grandmother said. And she stood up and marched out of the room with me behind her. Right, I'm going to stop the video now. We're going to do this in two sections again. So you'll need to watch both videos. And in the next video, I'll start where we left off.